unlike drugs, which stimulate the chemoreceptor receptor zone. Uh, okay. This uh, is second, not sir, uh, chemoreceptor second. mediated. This is vagal mediated. Yes. It's not the chemoreceptor trigger zone. That's the essential difference we need to know between somatic pain and pain induced by autonomous organs. Yes. Yeah, let's move on. Yeah. So, uh, can we answer like that, that uh, even ureteric colic people have a tendency to drink more fluids, especially when they're no, imaging no, also, that also provokes... No, no they, they don't take a discussion okay. there, okay. because they'll ask you, how do you know? And if it's a first time colleague, he won't know he has to drink fluids. Yes, yes. Exactly. Only when we tell him, he will do it as a prophylactic. Yes. Okay, let's move on. The hematuria, it was uh, painless or painful? They said the pain is already there. Flying pain is already there. Yes, sir. Next slide. <clears throat> this uh, his his diabetic uh, type two diabetic and is on insulin since five years. Uh, no other history of hypertension or uh, any smoking or alcohol tobacco chewing. No significant family history of urolithiasis and uh, no allergy to any medications. See here again, Kamal. Yes, sir. Family history of urolithiasis is important only if it is urolithiasis in children. If you go to North India, you, you are from North India, yes, if you go to Punjab, Rajasthan, Uttar Pradesh, Gujarat, nearly every household will have two or three people. Exactly. So, so in children it's important because we have to look for genetic and protein abnormalities. Yes, sir. We'll move forward. Yes, yes. Uh, on examination, ECOG score 1. Uh, vital stable. No pallor, ictus, sinuses. Uh, ictus cannot be stable unless monitored over a period of time. Vital One can be normal at the point One. of examination. What is the latest... Recommendation from WHO on blood pressure? So, uh, at least uh, twice? No, 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 no. In no, no. which condition will you start treatment? At what level of blood pressure in a normal exactly. patient and in a patient with cardiac problem? So more than 140 uh, by 90. Uh, may you twice? Are, bhai sahab, at least eight times of India. If not the journal, uh, now it is 130 and 80. That's the point at which I want treatment started to reduce the incidence of cardiac complications. Okay. Yeah. Uh, no peripheral edema or lymphadenopathy. Then abdomen and soft, no palpable mass. Incidentally, on that PA stands for palpation abdomen. But it's coming to home, it's all right. Bubble sounds normal. Other uh, systemic examination are normal. Distal rectal examination uh, revealed uh, grade one enlarged prostate, soft, non tender. Who, who is discussing? Uh, sir, from Kalyani Kidney Care Center. Your name, please. Oh, welcome. Lalit, sir. Lalit. Lalit. Lalit? Yes, sir. He is a diabetic on insulin for five years. Yes, sir. In addition to this so called CVS, RSCNS, 
within normal. What would you specifically like to examine as part of your systemic examination? Mm. You take that as history and you will examine also. Diabetic food, diabetic food, uh, we can see any ulcers over the food. Or... Does it come with a label, diabetic food? And, uh, with no label, so we will see any ulcers or any skin changes. Or... One is you look for ulcers, which you would have complained. What else will you look for? The earliest manifestation of diabetic neuropathy is, uh, what is that, stocking and glove type paresthesia and burning. Yes, sir. Right? Yes, sir. So we'll ask for that. Simply we can check for test for the skin uh, sensation, superficial sensation. Yes. Then we will also be asking the patient about his vision. He may not have told you thinking it's urology, but he may be having diabetic retinopathy or other complications. Right? And we may ask him about his urine output. In fact, we should about whether his urine output has changed from earlier. Okay, these are all part of the history and the examination that has to happen in a diabetic. Okay, Lalit, carry on. Yeah. So blood investigations are uh, real? It's a normal hemoglobin, no anemia, I mean, uh, Renal function normal, sir? That we won't know until we calculate GFR. Yes, sir. Okay. Yes, sir. Uh, remember, we have morbidity, underlying renal disease. Always look at GFR and not serum creatinine. Yes, sir. Money. Money. Use this GFR money in, in all clinical work right now. <clears throat> in order to stay in our brain as to how things have to be handled. EGFR is a simple thing. Everybody does it, so just routinely ask for it. That's it. A urine culture strike and a urine analysis uh, revealed pH of 7. Hang on. Lalit. Yes, sir. You read this out. Yes, and sir. Point out what are the abnormalities. Sir, there are RBC uh, 8 to 10 and first cells are there. Start from the top. Yes, sir. Uh, RBC and first cells are there. Start in from the top. From physical examination uh, of urine. Uh, color is uh, straw colored. You know, uh, abnormal things. Okay, sir. Mm -hmm. pH is uh, towards alkaline, sir, uh, 7. Above that, there uh, uh, may be some uh, infection or proteas. No, no, above that, above that. Hey, you guys can't say some sediments. Sir. Sorry? Sediments. Very significant, isn't it? Yes, sir. Uh, and you simply can't say maybe some infection. If pH is alkaline, you have to mention what infection it could be or what type of organism. Yes, sir. Uh, it could be proteus or uh, this way. Uh, Urea splitting yeah. organisms. Yes, sir. Thank you. Uh, yeah. RBCs are there. Uh, it uh, could be due to infection or could be uh, due to strong disease. Or just another. First cells are there, sir. In a patient with stone disease and sterile cultures, what stone do you think? Let's say <coughs> that this is a stone disease. What stones are common in alkaline pH? Uh, mostly, sir, uh, staghorn or infecting uh, triple phosphate stone and maybe stones in alkaline pH, sir. 
magnesium ammonium phosphate stone and these are more, more common cells what does it rule out what stones are uncommon at this ph um so this um, uric acid stones uh, and uh, uh, calcium oxalate stones these are less likely in this ph and uh, uh, the other stones uh, uh brucite and this these are less likely uh, mostly in, in this ph uh, we will go with uh, magnesium ammonium phosphate stones no problem. A stagon calculate only composed of triple phosphate? Uh, not no, only triple phosphate, sir. Huh? No, sir, other metric stones. What other type of stones can be stagon? Uh, I said, for the good I. I want to know about them. What are the other urea splitting bacteria? Kya ji? Only protease, you know. You will be surprised at what these bacteria can do when they are up to. Pseudomonas can split, uh, split, uh, split. Staph aureus can split. <laughs> so you can get stagon due to triple phosphate. You can get stagon due to simple even calcium oxalate can form stagon. Stagon is just the shape of the stone. It is just that in the old days it, it was always associated with we thought the triple phosphate. But now as things have moved on, you can get stagon from anything. I mean. So remember this, it's not something that uh, only Proteus does. Hmm? Yes. Yes. Then a third of these will show Proteus. Most of them will show other organisms. If you run through your lab, you'll find out. So what next? So at this point, what do you think the patient could have? Six months of colic has been passing a little blood intermittently. Sorry, sir. Internet connection was low, sir. Sorry? My internet connection was low, sir. I didn't be logging, sir. You're okay sir. now? Ah, yes, sir. Now it's okay. Yeah. Uh -huh. So, okay, this is a 65-year-old history of type 2 diabetes on insulin. Six months, he had colicky pain, uh, lumbar pain on the left side, not colic. And now, in addition, he also had hematuria, which was macroscopic, but small quantities. Now and then. He had no temperature, he had no fever associated. He gives a past history of passing stones in urine. This is the history. Right. I would uh, like to do uh, ultrasound. I don't want you to do anything. Before we let you go, or whatever, we want you to convince us what diagnosis you are thinking of. Only then imaging comes in. Okay, sir. Uh, first, this is stone disease, sir. My first DD will be. What is it, second? Uh, so, any urothelial malignancy, sir. What is it, third? What, sir? What, sir? What is the third? Uh, and infection is less likely, so actually there is no fever and anything. No, no, no. There are possibilities. Yes, what sir. are those possibilities, Lalit? Mm. 
Think of common conditions in diabetics which give rise to pain and they present with small amounts of hematuria, especially during pain. They don't produce hematuria like urethelial or renal malignancies. Myelonephritis. Mm. He has got two factors. One is diabetes and the second is recurrent stone disease. Can these two combine to produce a third condition which can cause this? Which can present with sediment and this pH reaction, some pus cells, some RBCs. Pylonephritis. Pylonephritis is what? It's a very generic word. Chronic, acute. Chronic pylonephritis, sir. Chronic pylonephritis. To what? You to what? Sir, the duration of pain and the, uh, around six months, sir. And the chronic pylonephritis is a pathological term. Uh, it can be as a result of stone disease. It can be as a result of just chronic infection due to stone disease. It can be even without stone disease, chronic pylonephritis. The last example being reflux, isn't it? Yes. Chronic pyelonephritis does not convey anything. Are you saying this patient has got just chronic pyelonephritis due to what? Diabetes. Can diabetes give rise to chronic pyelonephritis? No, without, no, no, without stone? No, sir. Oh, what? Uh, Baba, please be careful. Uh, there are three or four classical pathological changes in diabetes. The last one of them is KW, Kemmerstein Wilson syndrome bodies. And when those happen, but before that, there are lots of other changes in the kidney before it reaches the w, uh, KW. Huh? And the first thing is chronic pyelonephritis. Yes, sir. Without, you don't have to have stones at all. You don't have to have stones at all. Don't you see these patients coming to the hospital? Okay. So the sugars go out of control, record of episodes of infection, you pump them with one week with amication, the next week it is pepperacillin, third week it is viropenem, uh, like that it goes on? Yes, sir. So that's what Dr. Mohan is asking you, what are the other infections which can present in this fashion? Saying chronic pyelonephritis is not not the answer. Supposing you I have do. Sorry. Sorry, carry on. Supposing you have a patient with XGP. Yes, sir. Histology of the kidney show chronic pyelonephritis? Yes, sir, will show. It will show. So, can uh, XGP kidney have? No growth on culture? Might be some, there will be growth. Sir. May have been treated? You don't know? Yes. But all the other features can be there. You can have some pus cells, some RBC, some sediment. Can you have pain in the loin? So all this can happen. So you have to think of other conditions also, apart from tumor. What indication other than stone disease are erythroscopy is done for as a curative treatment? Erythroscopy along with something else. In diabetics. Is that right, more In diabetics. Yeah, yeah, in diabetics. Sir, uh, renal papilla. Then is that not a diagnosis? In fact, in some centers, you will find this is more common than urinary calculus mm. as a cause of pain. 
So when you look at the picture, you must put all this. Stone, yes, because it's a communist. Renal papillary necrosis would be the next. Because yes, two risk factor. Get it? And then you can go on to the other things which might which are reasonable. Yes, sir. That sediment is a dead giveaway. Yes. Chalo, let's move on. Case is this? Whose case is this? Sir, this this put sir. Hey, don't put up so many images in one frame. Oh yes, sir. We can't make anything out. You don't even have to put up all images. Put up the ones that show significant features. Okay, sir. Sir, in this uh, ultrasound, both the kidneys uh, appear normal in size and shape, sir. And uh, cortico medullary differentiation is maintained, sir. No pelvic electric system di uh, dilation is present. Uh, in the left kidney, sir, uh, posterior acoustic shadowing is present in the lower pole, sir. So, likely due to stone, sir. And urinary bladder is also normal in size and shape. There is no filling defect, sir. Uh, no stone in the bladder, sir. Prostate is also, sir, normal in size, shape, and good in it. Let people is the the right half of the image is a copy of the left half of the image. <laughs> Make it proper. Let's not have a lighthearted discussion. Okay, bring good images. We learn, you learn. Okay, what's the yeah, diagnosis? Uh, left renal calculus. What does the sonologist say? What's that? Hey, I go on. Go on, Lalit. Yes, sir, I would like to get an X3 uh, KUV. You want an X3 KUV? Yes, you want something else? Uh, in this uh, X ray, they uh, no, they but you yes, do you want X ray KUV or do you want something else? Sir, first X ray KUV, sir, and uh, after that, uh, we okay. can do the functional study also, sir. Okay. So this is the X-ray. In this X-ray, there is a radio opaque lesion in the area of the left kidney. Hey, what is radio opaque lesion? Corona pathar has tag on. The salmon calculus is there in this. Don't waste time, okay? Just wait. In the kidney, it can't be anything else. What type of tag on is this? Stagmon calculus, sir. What type? 
so it is involving the lower calyx and the pelvis so it will be sir so what do you call that type of stigma um borderline sir borderline what do you mean borderline it is involving renal pelvis and one calyx sir Is no borderline stagon. Yes, sir. What are the types of stagon you have heard of? Sir, uh, there is a Rosweiler classification. According to that, there are four types of uh, stagon calculus: borderline, partial, and complete and gigantic. Sir. So, if the renal pelvis plus one calycial system is involved, it is borderline. And if pelvis with two calycial system involved, then it's partial, sir. And uh, if whole pelvic calycial system, 80% of pelvic calycial system is involved, then it's a complete. And if complete PCS is involved, then it is called gigantic. So what is this variety? Uh, sir, uh, as pelvis and lower calyx is uh, involved, uh, only one calyx is involved. So I think it uh, is borderline. You you think the pelvis is involved? Uh, yes, sir. If the pelvis is involved, what type of pelvis is it? What type of pelvis do you think if the pelvis is involved? The pelvis is not fully involved, sir. But Sorry, sir, your voice is not audible. Is there anything in the ureter? Uh, no, sir. Nothing in the ureter. Is okay. there any other uh, peculiarity? You won't call it abnormality. See. In this X-ray, sir. Mm -hmm. Sorry. Uh, in this X-ray, any other abnormality? Yes. Other than this in this X-ray. Sir, uh, this sacroiliac joint and this uh, lower lumbar region. Uh, well, okay. These are fused, sir. These are some major related things. Yes, okay. Okay. Mm. Uh, so some uh, functional study also need uh, we will need. Sorry. Uh, some functional study uh, functional study also we will need, sir. No, no, no. I am asking you, what peculiarities do you see? Other than the genital urinary system, what peculiarities do you see? The sacroiliacus is there, sir. No, I told you no. That's just age related. Staring at you. What is on the right side of the abdomen? The bowel shadows are there. Uh, single, multiple? Multiple bowel shadows are there. Group together, spread out. Uh, group together, sir. Do you see something like this on the left side? No, sir. Left side, there is no small bowel. Yes, sir. Right? Yes, sir. We don't know what it is, but we have to note this finding because that would be something of importance. Yes, sir. Right? Okay. So now what? Uh -huh. Sir, uh, we can do IVP, sir. Which is the best imaging after you've done a KUB? Best will be the CT urography, sir. Then why don't you ask for it, for a stupid IVU, and make him pay some 4,000 for it, and then again give him contrast for something else? I would have been happy and perhaps the others also. If you had said once you saw the stone on ultrasound, I want to do a plain CT KUB. Yes, sir. Right? And I'll follow it up with a 
contrast study if there is anything abnormal. Because yes, that would have given you a lot more detail than a KUB. This plain city will be better. Yeah. So we should have asked for that. Okay, these days examiners expect plain city. Yes, sir. Not KUB. Okay. KUB is okay for screening after a procedure. You've done a PCNL or you've done an open surgery or whatever, you really want to check whether clearance has been complete. For that, we don't do a plain seat. We do a KUB. Okay? Yes, sir. What do we have? Next. A CT film is over Put it up. This is plain seat. Yes, a plain seat. In this uh, plain CT, sir, both the kidneys and uh, everything is normal, sir, except this type of calculus in the lower pole uh, of the kidney. Do you want to see an enlarged image of all this, at least the axial sections? You want to tell your radiologist, don't give me mini micrography. I want a good sized image. You'll be able to see more. I would want to. Yes. Okay. Yes, sir. Yeah, Lalit. Yes, sir. Answer. Answer. Stagon calculus is the only finding in this uh, CT plane, sir. In the left, uh, left kidney, sir. Scroll up. In the scroll up, no. Go to the next image, please. In the left, uh, renal pelvis and the inferior calyx, uh, this stone is present. Uh, uh, yeah. Where is the pelvis? You've been harping on pelvis. Where is it, Pelvis? Dr. Ganesh also asked me the same question. Where is it, Pelvis? Sir, uh, in the, in the um, left side, in the middle part, the left side, sir, uh, this stone is going towards Pelvis. In the interior calyx. I don't agree with you. This boy is saying, I don't know, I think is vomiting. This, I think there were two ways which are crossing the national board. Both were, means, as content is said. You see, the pelvis is spared. There is nothing in the pelvis. You can see clear fluid. This is sitting in the lower calyx. You understand? Yes, sir. So don't simply assume that because it's a stagon, it must be in the pelvis. Okay. Yeah, okay. Next. Before uh, proceeding for management, uh, I would like to uh, get a functional study or to learn. Wait, next.
What is this irregular counter? What does it mean to us? Something about the left kidney has not been mentioned, which is in connection with what Mohan asked you. What is on top is the left kidney. Left leg, you know, for some, for some reason, that aspect of the kidney is never looked at by anybody, I feel. Yeah. Even when the looking at an x-ray, they won't talk about that feature. The CT fellows will not report that. Huh? And it said it's so easy. It should be there in their uh, software. As soon as it tuck tuck, it should come out. I think it's with the filming that's a problem. I because know. they choose which ones to print. Oh, right. right. Maybe that too. But at least the reporting. If you have, if they have said that the right kidney size is normal, they have not told us the left kidney size. They only said irregular contour. You remember we talked about chronic pyelonephritis. We've got stone here. We've got diabetes here. They only told us he's got a three centimeter diameter. You don't know what's the size of that kidney. It's very important, isn't it? Yes, sir. Why is it important? Why is the size of that kidney important? This is a nice paradox. Sir, uh, due to the, uh, we can, if uh, size is contracted or small, uh, it's likely that or it's hydronephrotic. Uh, oh, are, are all small kidneys hydronephrotic? No, sir. Uh, in small kidney or uh, sir, hydronephrotic kidney, or uh, there are chances of uh, uh, kidney functioning less. Uh, there are the chances. Less, not necessary. Many small kidneys function quite well. Which type of small kidney will function well? Which type of small kidney? So surprisingly, reasonably good function for its size. Yes. Uh, I don't know, sir. Yeah, come on. Anybody? Which type of small kidney functions well for its size? The congenital one, sir. What congenital? Congenital what? The sponge, medullary sponge kidney? No, no. Mm -hmm. Medullary sponge kidney is not small in size. Small. Congenital what, man? Okay. You are right. Congenital something kidney. Don't know, sir. What is a kidney that is small and has smooth contours? No irregularity, no contraction, but smooth. A congenital hypoplastic kidney? Yes, congenital hypoplastic kidney. It doesn't have to be non-functioning all the time. It used to be a fashion once upon a time to knock all of them off, saying a kidney is small. But we discovered they contribute well, any of them. So today nobody does nephrectomies for small kidneys. <coughs> yes, Lalit, back to you. Yes, sir. Um, I would like to do my contrast CT. Why do you want to give him contrast? Uh, Diabetic, uh, high risk. Uh, to assess the function of the uh, kidney, so kidney function. Is contrast the only way you can assess? And can you assess function accurately with a contrast CT? Uh, we cannot calculate. Uh, uh, Which is 
the most accurate way, or what we, among what we have, the most the accurate technique for measuring the function of the kidney. BTPS scans. Oh, Praveen, ready to answer. What's the story, sir? I don't know, somebody is answering in the background. Which is the most useful or accurate we have at present with us for assessing renal function? MAG3, sir. Sir, nucleo. Uh, Radionuclide study, right? Yeah, radionuclide study. Yeah, so why, why do you want to give contrast? Which won't tell you anything other than that it's excreting. What's being done next? Margaret. Left side, the kidney is not even excreting. It's just concentrating contrast. That's it, right side. Yeah, yeah. Uh, can you zoom on that image? Over the controller on the right image, the fourth frame image. Yeah, uh, scroll up. Scroll up, 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 not down, up. Sorry. Uh, I, yeah, the next one. Not that. Move back. See, I want to see the ILA curator. Yeah, excellent. The middle one. Yeah, fantastic. You want to comment on the ureter? Um, left, left ureter is sir, uh, dilated sir. And uh, it's, uh, outline is also not smooth sir. Don't use vague terms. What is it called if the ureter is like this? It looks like a bearded ureter, isn't it? Yes, sir. Uh, that uh, city fellow has not seen it at all. That is why we have to see our images. What could be the cause of the bearded ureter? I'm not asking for causes. In this case, what could be the cause? Mm. The inflammation of the ureter. Uh, I don't know. Examine. Hey, for everything you want to put your kai in, not done. <laughs> looking at this ureter, looking at the irregularity, what could be the cause for the irregularity? So, any urothelial carcinoma. Why man urothelial carcinoma? Patient has got a stag Patient has got a stag on. Patient has got sediment in the urine. Uh, irregularity, little bit of bleeding in the ureter. It's a type of ureteritis. Yes. Sir. It's an inflammatory reaction to the stone. To the stone, that's all. Yes, sir. But you have to notice the finding, Narit. It is not TB, it is not, this is all ureteritis cystica. Just like you have cystitis cystica, you will get that also in the ureter. It produces this. Yeah, let's move on. 
I know there will be folk who want to do all kinds of work up with cubic losses, including biopsy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, let's move on. So I asked you, you know, what type of pelvis do you think it is? When we looked at the CT scan, you said this is borderline staghorns. Then I asked you what type of pelvis it is. I was hoping that you would make a comment just looking at the disposition of the stones as to what type of pelvis it would be. Now can you tell me what type of pelvis it is? Looking at this eye view. Uh -huh. No, the previous one was okay. Yeah, stay here. You can look at the bottom films. Yeah. What are the types of pelvises? Morphologically, what are the types of pelvises we get? Uh, sir, I have uh, four words, sir. Sorry. Sorry? Uh, I don't uh, remember. Vedanayagam, anybody? What are the types of pelvis? Vedanayagam. Intrarenal pelvis. Yeah, intrarenal and? Yes, sir. Loudly you have to tell, man. One mile away you are telling. Okay, this type, what is this type of pelvis? Okay, he says it's intrarenal pelvis. You agree with him? What is the percentage of pelvis which are intrarenal, which are external? How percentage of external? There is something more also in this. Besides the point. Yes. There is intrarenal yes. Yes. Something else is also. Bifid pelvis? Yes. Uh. So these are important. See, if a pel uh, pelvis is coming out of the renal border, then it's an extra renal pelvis. If it is within the renal border, it's an intra renal pelvis. Similarly, the pelvis can be bifid, trifid, complex. Okay. These descriptions are not just radiological description. They matter in management also. You compare the left and the right. Eighty percent of the kidneys have intrarenal pelvis. Twenty percent have extrarenal pelvis. So majority of the kidneys, the pelvis is intrarenal. Does that uh, pattern of kidney make any difference? Difference to what, Prabhu? The pelvis. I mean, the in relation to the. Oh, in relation to. A complication, so. Hello, Lalit? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, it, uh, there will be difficult to puncture uh, the kidney and uh, with the so, infundibulum. Uh, the... Lalit? Yes, sir. Approach it from the probability of complications arising, yes. not during surgery, to the... in life. What you are seeing is a typical example. Right, these are all, the pelvis is not wide, and so the calculi are all packed inside the calyx, and uh, we have inflammation because the drainage of urine from that calyx is poor and has provoked inflammation due to repeated colics and the stones. 
What is important to remember that there is an entity called calicial colic. It doesn't happen all the time in the pelvis of the process. Stones in the calyx can give rise to pain. So this condition also described as calicial colic. So the pain can be there due to a small stone also. What will do for this kidney? PCL will be the good option, sir. PCL will be easy. Not easy, uh, sir, but... Why won't it be easy? Because this uh, stone is in, uh, impacted, sir, and the pelvis is also not dilated. So... Aray, Baba, pelvis se kya fayda hai? It's the calyx you're puncturing. But, uh, so, calyx is impacted with stone, so while puncturing, sir, uh, we, uh, there are the chances that. Uh, but it's easy, no? You puncture onto the stone. But the uh, urine flow will uh, not come in the puncture. No. Look at the disposition of the. And then you will know as to whether this is an easy PCL or a difficult PCL. The KUB will tell you enough. It is a difficult PCL to do because, yes, you're right, calyces are not dilated, not enough fluid. The stones are sitting in different calices. You don't have enough room in the pelvis for adequate irrigation to visualize what you want to. That might be a restriction. And the fourth is repeatedly pass your stones from that. So we expect scarring, we expect fibrosis, which makes it difficult. Is the patient who may require more than one track to clear a stone? Uh, certainly more than one track. Looking at the disposition of the stone. You see the lower stone, which is straddling. It is straddling the one calyx to the other. The, from one infundibulum into the other. It's straddling the papilla and everything else that is sitting there. So, you know, you have to be careful. The parent camera is in between that. Not going to be an easy PC handle. So what's the other option? Mm -hmm. Open pilot. Is that easy? Open, Open pilot is that easy in this patient? Uh, no Mr. Paul, you'll have to search for the pelvis. What about RIRS? Sir, RIRS will be difficult, sir. Actually, the stone is in the lower calyx and uh, uh, size is also big, sir. It's around more than 3 centimeters. Have people done RIRS for bigger, for 3 centimeter stones? Yes, sir, done, sir. So, uh, people have done it, it's not difficult for that person. We can do RIRS process. What will you do? Will you? In the exam, the examiner will ask you what you will do. I'll do PCNL. You'll do PCNL. You'll put okay. one. Here is a question from the patient. He says, I'm repeatedly passing stones for several years. This is agony. Can you do something where the risk of stones is removed or less? Please answer that question very carefully. And to answer that question, you must also know about the history of stone disease. Surgery, sorry, surgery for the stone disease. History of surgery for stone disease. 
Which is the commonest location for stones to form in the kidney? Lower calyx. Lower calyx. Why? Because what is the uh, urine remains stagnant there. So it has never been proven. It's just that you have analogies that dogs don't form stones in that position because the dog kidney is not in this position. That's all. But the human being, yes, there's no doubt that lower polycalices are more common. Stones are more common. So, can that be taken as a cue to reduce this patient's agony? Dr. Mohan says that his patient is complaining every time I'm coming with stone bars, every time money is wasted, I'm having pain, this, that, everything. Can you use that statement that you made to try to figure out a treatment for this patient? Will reduce that that risk. Treatment uh, uh, of UTI we can do, sir. UTI. What is UTI? Uh -huh. The treatment uh, because the pH is alkaline and there may be some proteas and bacterial infection. So for that we can um, give antibiotics. That means you keep the stone and give antibiotics. Eh? You have the to first. Step. Be... You are asking about how the stones will be tackled. So, yeah, yeah. I don't know, sir. For that, you must know what are the types of operations that were done for stone disease in the years ago. And how nobody has ever produced a paper of that nature at all. Uh, find out the history of partial nephrectomy for stones in the lower pore. Partial nephrectomy of the lower pole was published in the BJU, not BJUI, BJU. The lead author was a Sri Lankan fellow and it was also produced from London, if I'm not mistaken. So it's a very interesting article. Interesting article. Have you heard of any combined treatment, sandwich treatment, ECIRS? What is sandwich? And when was this term first used? Sandwich. Sandwich treatment for stone disease. It's the combination of um, two type of modalities for uh, like uh, ESW and PCN and so where's the sandwich? Sandwich is two layers of bread with something in between, isn't it? Yes, sir. Uh, so what is this sandwich? You have heard of it, no? Sandwich treatment for stone. And then Prabhu has asked you another question. I have heard, but... Okay. A lot of reading. Lot of reading to do today. Yes. Right. That article you have to find out. Partial nephrectomy for stone disease. Yes, One of the operations that have been done for stone disease is what is called a stone shoot, ileum ureters. All right. In those days, before PCNL and RIRS and all this came through, if you went into a kidney more than once to take out stones, which was common, it would be a very difficult operation. And some of these patients can form stones very frequently. One operation, two operation, three, goes on and on. And the fourth operation may be nephrectomy. Yes, so, there was an operation called ileal ureter. You connect a segment of ileum to the pelvis in these patients with recurrent stone disease or even with single kidney. Because if that kidney is forming stones, they can have anuria if it is single kidney, which is life-threatening. Or this problem of going in again and again. Because of the ileum, 
the stones which are forming in the kidney drop into the bladder and it's easy to take out stones from the bladder multiple times without going in endoscopic if you have done open surgery for stone disease in patients who have recurrent stone disease you will realize the value of the ile ureter it's not done today but it's something that we cannot forget what history has told us so we did one Actually, the the stone again after the we did one in 1984. Many more. For, no, I know. I said we did one for a young Iranian athlete and student in Bangalore. He was from Iran, and the fellow was in agony practically every month, and there were still stones in the kidney. So, Doctor Joseph, he said, "I show you something new. Come." and we did a replacement and he never came back very happy the fellow's abdominal wall was nearly 6 in thick with muscles yeah, so it's a terrible experience that's right so this is a this is an operation that was done i myself have done it for patients many years ago we used to get a lot of patients from the northeast when the the urology service was not well developed there and they would be single kidneys and they would come with stones and if you have anuria it's a very serious life threatening problem so there were a series of patients on whom i did ile ureters for them this the beauty is none of the patients on whom ile ureters have been done for stones again nobody knows the reason but it's presumed it's due to the effect of mucus protective effect of mucus which the ile elaborates which prevents the stone formation formation is in the kidney It's not agreed, but the mucus is is all going up and down. No, it's not saying that. So, so this is just saying, huh? PH is whatever. God knows what happened, but I have not seen a single patient forming a stone in the kidney with ile ureter. And the operation that was described for lower pore stones in those days was lower pore partial nephrectomy. Again, based on the simple concept. that it is the stasis of the kidney that promotes the stasis of the urine in the lower pore and that article is a fantastic article and it, the all those patients never formed a stone again the problem is how long do you follow up these patients they did have a follow up but the follow up was not 5 10 15 years because it's not been formed but they are reasonable their follow up was very long enough for us to say that well this is a challenge nobody has produced a paper after that on that of of that nature I forget the name of the Sri Lankan bio. There's clearly a Sri Lankan name, and I've read the article. It's worth looking at. It's in the old BJ. It's not uh, in the. Just put low pole partial nephrectomy, stone disease. You will get a series of articles, and this is one of them. Very, very good article. I mean, it's not it's not exam type of question, but it's just historical. I mean, it's nice to know what what's happened and how things have evolved in the treatment of stone disease. Anyway, any so, questions from anyone? Whatever you manage do with for this patient with stone disease, it's not an easy operation. Even if it is minimally invasive, it is not easy. You may have to have two tracks. You do all sorts of things. You may have to combine any part with uh, RARS. God knows what you have to do. I don't. You have to combine. So this is all the. I'm not a stone man, but I can look at the stone and tell you that it's not going to be easy. There's also a good risk because that lower pole is scarred. The vessels will be sitting there, which is not very, which will not work, and you could have a risk of bleeding also in the patient like this. Narrow space, narrow space. Pelvis can get torn, over dilating. So when we question like this is asked. in the exam as to what are the difficulties you have to mention all these yeah. uh, how many tracks you will use because we know that the number of tracks is directly proportional to the risk of bleeding article from mayes desai group that article is all quoted so you must know all this more than n number of tracks higher risk of bleeding stone disposition contracted pelvis contracted kidney lower pole problems so there is actually a flattening of the lower pole you see which means is probably 
considerable fibrosis already. If somebody can do an imaging which will tell me what is exactly the quantum of nephron population in that lower pole, <laughs> huh? then we will have an answer to the treatment of that patient's core disease. <laughs> <laughs> Or take a kidney biopsy and say, oh, the glomerulus is reversed. No, the day might come. God knows. Anyway. All these computer biscuits, they are trying all kinds of things. Anyway. Right, sir. So some reading to be done, no? Yeah. No, this is the best time to read it, man. I'm telling you, today is the best day to read this. No, you, no, you finish. It's colors. You read it and it's there somewhere stored in your cerebral cortex for recovery later on. Yes, sir. Yeah. If there are no questions from anybody, maybe we can close sure. for the day. Right. Bye, folks. All of you. Have a nice week. We'll catch up next Thursday. Thank you, sir.